Hi everyone, this is Emily from Shade Design Studio. Today I'm going to show you a batch of soap I made combining two methods. Melt and pour soap as an in bed and then cold process soap the rest. This batch of soap is called Berry Chocolate. Berry Chocolate Soap was actually inspired by Celine from I Am Handmade, aka the Soap or Start. Hi Celine and Titch! This is for you. It took me more than 40 minutes to complete this soap project, and I'm not going to bore you with the whole length of it. So I had to do a lot of trimming and fast forwarding um, in order to condense it to less than 17 minutes. About a week ago, Celine made this soap using real dark chocolate as one of the major ingredients, and that was the inspiration for this berry chocolate soap. I didn't have any dark chocolate in hand, so I had to use cocoa powder instead. I purposely chose a recipe that uses high percentage of cocoa butter because I wanted to use the unrefined cocoa butter for this soap. The unrefined version of the butter has this nutty aroma. Hopefully when used in soap will be able to enhance that cocoa powder scenting in the final product. I also use half water, half coconut milk method to make this batch because I really like the creamy leather feeling that coconut milk give it to the soap. The fragrance oil I decided to use for this soap is black raspberry vanilla or some suppliers rename it to black raspberry cream but I think they're the same thing, they smell the same to me. This is actually one of the very few fragrance oils that I like that behaves very well in the cold process soap. It allows me to play with my design a lot. Now that you already saw me mixing um, the lye into the butter oil mixture and the coconut milk, you are looking at me putting some soap away, mixing it with a little bit of red and um, some white. Um, those are for the drizzles at the very end. You'll see me drizzle on top of the strawberry. Um, now you are looking at me mixing in um, the dark cocoa powder into the main batch. The strawberry that I was going to put on the top of the soap were made with melt and pour soap base. I would say I probably use 99% clear base and 1% white base to get a very intense true red color to imitate the real strawberry. I only have one 3D strawberry silicone mold so I have to pour the strawberry one by one and that is very time consuming. I was supposed to make totally 8 strawberries to be to fill out the whole log but I got so lazy and didn't have enough patience to pour 8 of them. I decided that I should just do 4 and then cut a strawberry in half and use half um, per bar of soap. As you can see the soap batter didn't get as dark as I wanted so I had to use some um, fragrance oil to help it out. I chose a fragrance oil that's kind of chocolate related. It has very high vanilla content so I know it eventually will discolor the soap at the end to really dark which is exactly what I wanted. I only use that chocolate fragrance oil in uh, the dark brown portion of the soap because I do not want my red raspberry swirled um, to this color to too dark. At the end of the day, I think the fragrance oils that I chose will go well together even though it's not a traditional method where you mix the fragrance oils first and then you fragrance the whole batch evenly. Even though that I knew black raspberry vanilla fragrance oil might not speed up the trays, I just wanted to be extra cautious um, not to mix in the fragrance oil until the very end when I'm ready to pour so I can have enough time to mix in the color that I wanted. The reason that I was being extra careful about this 
is that I recently found out the same color that I used to color the soap might accelerate the trace of the batter or even worse it can seize um, the whole batch and then you will get soap on a stick in case you are wondering what red I use to color the world, it is um, Lake Red number no. seven, and also I added some Merlot Mica to deepen it a little so it's not so bright. It's still looking very bright though. The trick to get a random swirl uh, pattern in a base color is to pour the swirl color from really high level up down to use that force, gravity force, to push in um, the color into the base. And if you don't think um, the swirl is random enough, you can do what I did, use a spoon and randomly just stir in and out, left and right, any direction you want, randomly, across the whole mold. You do have to be careful not to overdo it, otherwise you will mix the two colors together too much and you will get really muddy. This is how it looks like so far after pouring in half of the brown and half of the red. Now you will see me repeat the same process again until to the top of the mold before I put in um, the strawberries. Another thing I wanted to point out is that if you want the swirl to go deeper, you pour higher. If you don't want the soap to go down deep, then you pour near to the surface of the soap. I really like this new uh, slim and tall format of the soap mold, but what's annoying to me with this kind of format is that the opening is so narrow that when you try to pour fancy swirls, um, the side always gets soap and it's messy and you have to spend some time um, cleaning it up unless you want your side of the soap to be messy too. Before I put in the strawberry, I took a stick and I did some surface swirling. This will be the background drop of those strawberry and some of the swirl might show up um, in between the strawberry or right on the knees of the strawberry. There is no special swirly pattern. All I did was drawing diagonal figure eight all the way across from left to right and from right back to the left and that's all I did. And let me show you how it looks like right before I put a strawberry on. This 3D strawberry although looks really real, it still has this flat bottom that I need to kind of cover it up so you don't see it. So what I did was taking the white soap that I reserved early on, I made a little base on one side of the mold and now you see the half strawberry that I cut and put the flat base that I want to hide right into the white base soap that I just made and this way it also makes the strawberry look tilted because this strawberry is actually quite long in real life and it probably won't fit into the mold. I think it looks better tilted instead of flat on the surface anyway. This project actually requires some planning ahead. I had to know how many strawberries I can fit across the mold from left to right and also how far to space them apart so I can cut in between them without cutting into any of the strawberries. After I place all the strawberries in the mold, then I take the rest of the white soap and I pile them up on the base side of the strawberry and try to make it look like cream on a cake. 
I wasn't supposed to show you my face, but I guess I was so concentrating um piling it up making it look like a dessert that i forgot that my head is dipping lower and lower and now you see half of my face showing up a lot of times i think this is the hardest part of the whole project is to make a random drizzle that look like a real sauce drizzle on a dessert it also can get really messy too. I had to keep on telling myself, stop worrying about how messy it gets. Um, I can always just clean it up afterwards. What I need to do is getting the timing correctly and squeeze the soap drizzle out to make it look random, but control the randomness. The funny thing is, I never have any desire to make dessert or bake cake. The most that I have done is probably baking, um, you know, one of those ready-made cake mix or ready-made cookie dough. I can tell you that I have no patience baking the real dessert and decorating the way that I'm doing. But I guess I love soap so much that I would do soap this way to this kind of extent. I used TKB's discontinued raspberry pop mica to color the drizzle. Um, it's a very nice soft pink, almost as real as the raspberry um, cream drizzles that you usually see on a dessert cake. The problem is, you can't see it here, but 24 hours later after I made this soap, um, the pink drizzle totally disappeared. It turned from a light pink to white. The final finishing touch is, of course, some glitters on top of um, all the drizzles and the strawberries and the cream. To fix the problem I mentioned earlier about the pink drizzle turned totally to white 24 hours later, when the soap was hard enough to take it out of the mold and be cut, I had to melt some melt and pour soap base in white and mixing some pearl pink mica to make it look pink again. Then do the drizzle again, um, just try to get the color back. It is not as easy as um, cold pasta soap dripping um, because the melt and pour tends to cool down really fast when you use a very small amount. But here it is. I present you the berry chocolate soap. It is a little messy and I'm going to do a lot of cleanup on the side but you can see it's the strawberry is very realistic and I can almost fool people telling you guys that this is a real berry chocolate cake. That's it. If you want to see the cut photo, please go back to my blog. I'll see you next time.